In 1999, when Mike Kaiser opened Band and Dunes with his David McClay Kid Design Golf Course, he thought he'd give his grand plan for a true Lynx golf destination three years to be successful. If no one came to play at such a remote location along Oregon's southwestern coast, he said he would turn it into a sheep ranch. Of course, Band and Dunes became a phenomenal success, and more courses followed. In 2001, Tom Doak unveiled a second 18, Pacific Dunes, and soon thereafter, he and his associate, Jim Urbina, scratched out an imaginative 13 holes on land just north of the resort on a stretch of ocean frontage jointly owned by Kaiser and his college roommate and business partner, Phil Friedman. They called the minimally maintained cross-country golf experience the Sheep Ranch. In 2018, Ben Crenshaw and I were retained by Mike and Phil to create a new 18-hole course on the site of the original Sheep Ranch. It would be a challenge and an adventure. First, to create a routing and a small footprint that would allow the course to be playable and enjoyable given the near constant winds, and to build a golf course that would measure up to the site's extreme potential. I'm Bill Coor, and this is Every Hole at the new Sheep Ranch at Bandon Dunes. The first hole at Sheep Ranch is a mid-length par five, playing over the crest of a large natural hill, downward to a clifftop green with the ocean behind. Ben and I have always believed the first hole on any course should be an introduction to what you're about to experience. With this cascading fairway and dramatic green sight, you will get the sense you're in for a rollicking adventure. And I've heard Mike Kaiser say it's his favorite opening hole at the resort. The second is a short, seductive par four that entices players to cut the corner and hit their tee shots directly toward the green, especially when the summer wind is at their backs. Playing along the risky right side provides a real advantage by leaving an open approach to the green. Playing left to the generous part of the fairway leaves a precarious pitch to an elevated windswept green, which from a golf archeology span perspective is the first encounter with a remnant of the original Sheep Ranch course. The third hole is a short par three, playing crosswind over or around a natural mound to a mostly hidden but massive green. The third is known as Phil's hole because Phil Friedman won the double green at Five Mile Point. We thought the way to do that was to play a short hole from inland toward the ocean to what is now the upper half of a double green shared with number 16. The par four fourth hole plays away from the ocean and perhaps lacks some of the visual drama of other holes. Yet as time passes, Ben and I think it will prove to be one of the most interesting holes on the course. Tee shots played to the left of, or over, a trio of grassy pits remaining from the original Sheep Ranch course will land on a ridge or bound into the valley beyond, leaving a straight approach into a split-level green nestled in a hole. The par three fifth was a key to our utilizing the coastline on as many holes as possible. While playing toward the ocean was visually spectacular and gave us more ocean frontage for the 15th hole, playing a lengthy par three in crosswinds concerned us about playability. This is why you'll see a large green tilted inward at its edges so shots hit onto the putting surface will likely remain there. It was standing at the back of this green nearly being blown into the ocean by a howling wind that we became convinced the Sheep Ranch should not have any formal sand bunkers. They would have been maintenance and playability terrors. Showcasing the Oregon coastline, the sixth is a long par four, playing diagonally over the ocean to a wider than expected fairway along the cliff. The elevated green, another remnant of the original Sheep Ranch, is set at the cliff's edge and makes the sixth hole one of the most dramatic and photogenic holes at Bandon Dunes. Like other holes at Sheep Ranch, the sixth will play much shorter into the summer winds from the north and much longer into the winter winds from the south. The seventh, the third par three on the front nine, again plays downhill toward the sea, 
this time with the beach in view. The tee shot is over a series of natural moguls to a green that seems suspended directly above the coastline, what Mike Kaiser likes to call an infinity green. During construction, we call this Mike's Hole, a counterpoint to Phil's third. At one point, Mike said to Phil, I guess we'll just have to see which one turns out better. We will leave that for you to decide. The par 4 8 turns inland and into the summer winds. A ghost tree at the far end of the fairway is a good aiming point, but the secret is to place your tee shot atop the ridge that runs down the middle of the fairway. If you're left of the ridge, you have a longer approach. If you're right of the ridge, you're blind to one of the most artistic and interesting greens on the course. The eighth green is not a punch bowl, but has a hint of that. It's not a beer it's, but it has the feel of one. It's like a lot of greens, yet unlike any other. Playing in the opposite direction of number eight, the par four ninth is another mid-length par four that plays over a natural chasm into a softly saddled fairway that slides toward the ocean. A ridge and slope 50 yards short of the green create a bit of visual mystery for the approach. A shot landing just over the ridge could be enough to feed the ball down the slope and onto the putting surface. Number nine green was another opportunity for us to match the horizon line of the green to the horizon line of the ocean, thereby creating the infinity visual that Mike and Phil so appreciate. The tenth hole is a stout par four that when played into the wind from the north will be a three shot hole for the majority of golfers. The fairway is vast and contains some of the most interesting and beautiful contours on the property. The tenth green is open across the front and deep enough to receive low bouncing approach shots. Like the fairway, the green has artfully crafted contours and pin placements. From the tees, the 11th fairway winds its way through tall evergreen trees to the base of a precipitous hill we call the volcano. From there, the fairway climbs abruptly through an opening in the volcano wall up to the crater floor, some 20 feet above the base of the hill. The green sits against the back wall of the crater below the clubhouse. With its distinctive character, it would be easy to argue this is the most memorable hole at the Sheep Ranch. So memorable that we seriously considered making it the finishing hole. The twelfth is a beautiful but demanding par four, playing away from the clubhouse over heaving contours toward the Gemalayas, the massive landform named for Jim Urbina who built it for the original Sheep Ranch. The fairway is generous to give room to play in the prevailing crosswinds with humps and pockets big and small and a large grassy pit pinching the approach shot. The swale on the front portion of the green is small, but that subtle feature is what makes this putting surface so special. The short par 5 13th plays back alongside the 12th hole toward the clubhouse. The fairway zigs and zags around a deep pit on the left and numerous gnarly scrapes and hollows on its way to a green perched atop a rise in an old sand quarry. While appearing easy on the scorecard, the 13th playing through the prevailing crosswinds and demanding a precise approach to its elevated green can quickly turn an expected four into a six or more. 14 is a mid-length par four that plays from a pedestal tee in the quarry over a large natural hill to a mostly hidden fairway. Shorter hitters should know they have room to play their tee shots right at the hill. Once over the crest, the golfer gets a view of the green, yet another gift from the original Sheep Ranch and the ocean in the distance. Of all the spectacular holes at Sheep Ranch, this old world quirky hole could well be my personal favorite. 15 is the start of a three-hole run directly above the sea. Bowl players can attempt to reach this green from the tee, but those playing strategically should hit to the left side of this expansive fairway. The closer the tee shot is to the edge of the cliff, 
the better the angle is into the cylinder green. There's far less risk playing down the right side, but the second shot must then negotiate an abrupt embankment onto the shallow green with the cliff down to the beach beyond. The par 3 16th was the easiest and most obvious hole for us to see and route. It's a spectacular location known as Five Mile Point. And there was already a green there, another remnant of the original sheep ranch. We changed the green's internal contours and combined it with the new third green, but otherwise the 16th remains, much as Jim Urbina created it years ago. Like 16 at Cypress Point and 16 at Cabot Cliffs, this will likely be the most photographed hole on the course. The 17th was another hole that didn't require extensive site research to envision or include in the sheep ranch routing. This par four plays diagonally over the ocean to a fairway heading north along the cliff. A mirror image of the sixth hole and showcases a different but equally spectacular stretch of coastline. The resort tees and the green are set on the edge of the cliff, surrounded by long deceased tree snags, also known as ghost trees at Bandon Dunes, which add to the hole's character and visual drama. After three consecutive holes on the ocean, the par 5 18th plays away from the water over rolling ground to a green benched into the hillside below the clubhouse. With summer winds assisting, tee shots can be played over several rugged, grassy scrapes to the upper left portion of the fairway, which offers better views of the green and a preferred angle for approach shots. Players going right can avoid the scrapes, but eventually will face a difficult approach to an elevated green from an awkward angle. During construction, we envisioned this hole as a par four, but for resort golf and the sake of happy customers, we're fine with it playing as a short par five. The Sheep Ranch is a combination of old and new, drama and detail. It's unlike any other course at Bandon Dunes, yet we hope it is a compliment to them all. The adventure of building the Sheep Ranch is complete. The adventure of playing it awaits. <laughs>